The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft koala bear of Wall Street. No woof here. Just a nice, cuddly, teddy, teddy bear. Although I am on a diet and getting a little smaller. So uh, maybe a little less teddy bearish than I was a week ago or two weeks ago. But uh, we will uh, move on and persevere as we see a market that's under a slight amount of pressure off 11 points on the S&P cash, which is about half percent on the S&P, a little bit more, 0.56%. As far as a volume, 1.6 billion shares, which is pretty consistent with these Fridays that we've had that have been non-expiration. But uh, we shall see. Uh, you know, we've got a little bit of news breaking out here. Ace Greenberg, uh, former Bear Stearns head. Of course, uh, if you've been trading for the last year, 10 years, Probably haven't heard a lot about him. He was 86 when he passed away today. Uh, but uh, he's like a lot of those guys that uh, grew up on, uh, 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 you know, probably harder times than it is now to make money in the stock market. If you're big, you actually kind of had to earn it when you weren't stealing it from your clients. But uh, eh, a lot of good words to go around for him. I don't know uh, a lot about uh, his tenure. I know a lot of people uh, that talked extremely highly of them now. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll find out more over the weekend about his life and times. Today in 1978, on this day, the world's first baby to be conceived via uh, vitro fertilization, in vitro, uh, is born at Oldham and uh, the District uh, General Hospital in Manchester, England, to parents Leslie and Peter Brown. The baby was delivered shortly before midnight by cesarean section and weighed in at 5 pounds, 12 ounces. Uh, they'd been trying to get uh, pregnant for, I don't know, 10 years or something. Tried everything, and uh, one of the doctors had kind of an idea. Uh, he worked with them for a couple of years, and they were first to conceive. On In uh, May 1999, uh, the baby Natalie became the first... Uh, uh, in, verto, in vitro, if I say it correctly, in vitro fertilization baby to give birth to a child of her own, not through IVF, by the way. So, uh, yeah, a brave new world, but uh, it hasn't crumbled quite yet because of it. Uh, I know we uh, shake our fist at God when we do this. At least some people say that we do. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't hurt anybody as far as I can tell. And uh, after, uh, what, uh, let's see, maybe 34, 36 years, uh, not a lot of problems, not a lot of babies born with two heads, that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, I digress. Of course, I wanted to do a little catch up. Uh, CYNK uh, opened actually for trading today. Uh, last I looked, it was trading out at about two bucks from its high of almost 22 bucks. Uh, the day before it was uh, closed for trading, uh, trading out at $2.06. And uh, I wanted to bring up two things here. First of all, uh, that uh, why is it worth uh, $2.06? Uh, we know it's a phony stock. And the reason actually it is, uh, oh, it just popped to two fifty. dollars uh, The reason it is, is uh, a lot of people don't want to wait the requested amount of time till the company goes bankrupt so that they can claim their profits and move on and take their ill-gotten gains somewhere else. So there is a market right now for a worthless stock to trade at $2.50, actually it's $2.05. So uh, someone must have just come in and cleared out a ton of these uh, shares all at once. Uh, 
And volume only says 350,000 shares so far, but we'll have to see. Maybe if I uh, refresh, I will see something new. It was 350. Eh, maybe, eh, maybe it was a block of 10,000 shares going through uh, that bought at the market just to find out what the market was. But, uh, of course, this is the company that uh, had uh, $39 in earnings for the year, uh, a fake website that went nowhere, and uh, a company that actually had been sold several times uh, for 100 or or 1000 bucks or something. It was that. And, of course, uh, the CEO is, uh, or uh, reputed CEO, uh, many, many times uh, uh, having a... Uh, run in with the laws, they said, and, of course, having a uh, phony uh, retirement village in uh, South America uh, that had a lot of pictures on the website of a beautiful resort, uh, but was nothing more than a wharf coming out and an old wharf at that. But uh, yeah, sometimes you even get a little lucky, and I guess... Uh, some people did with being able to buy the stock back. I have a feeling a lot more people know that it's worthless and will go to zero and probably wait the next 30 to 60 days uh, for this to get shut down. Most likely the SEC will come in and say, okay, uh, we're pulling the plug on you. And at that point, uh, the stock will go to a nickel and everybody will be uh, at the very end of uh, covering their shorts out there. But uh, at this point, uh, you can see it. Even Enron was, uh, when everybody knew it was uh, totally worthless, was uh, trading for a buck or two. Of course, back then, you actually physically had to buy the shares back. And uh, there used to be an actual market in companies that had gone bankrupt with worthless shares just so that they could cover their shorts so that they could actually bank the money at their broker-dealer. Uh, sometimes you never could, and you always had this kind of money that was in uh, Money purgatory, but uh, no longer. They changed that, I think, in 2005 or so. Uh, if you missed it last night, I think it's going to be probably on the PBS website, or I should be able to find it on the web somewhere. Uh, the anti-corruption drive, this is Jim Chanos speaking on Charlie Rose last night. The anti-corruption drive, which is something we've been focusing on uh, for the last year and a half since Xiping has been in power is actually much more than that, uh, Chanos told Mr. Rose. It now appears to us to be more serious effort to cleanse the potty. Cleanse the party? And if you look at the people's uh, daily overnight announcement, I mean, there are four or five headshots every night up, put up on Twitter on their website of people who have been taken away every night. And uh, if you don't know what that means, uh, that means taken out into the countryside and shot and left to rot. I mean, it's almost as if you're seeing a Soviet-style uh, 1930s purge through social media. People are falling out of buildings. I'm not exaggerating. Basically, he's going through um, what is uh, institutional corruption that had been around forever. And uh, they're actually trying to get rid of it. Uh, they're trying to drive their country into the 20th century. And uh, there's still lots of people with their hands in the till. Uh, but uh, over there, there's not a lot of appeals or anything else. And uh, the use of headshots as a term here on Twitter, probably very more descriptive uh, than what they thought when they said it. But uh, kind of interesting to see, especially when we've seen uh, the actual chai -coms themselves go after Qualcomm this week in a uh, almost gangsta-like style. As we said uh, yesterday, uh, gang acrosity. I didn't say it. I'm going to have to remember what I said now. Uh, but the, that's it. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> the Yo app. <laughs> we talked about that a month ago with Tom O'Brien. And uh, we were both right. We said uh, within a week we'd see another app. And I think by the time he'd come back, we had a, uh, another app that said, yeah. Or something else. Anyway, uh, just a little thought out there. The truth about earnings, I saw some numbers uh, splashed around on both uh, Bloomberg and CNBC today about how many earnings or what, how many uh, percentage of earnings that the S&P stocks had beat so far. They had uh, about 65%. 
And I looked at it, and I thought, well, that doesn't track with what I was looking at. And uh, I tried to figure out how they were coming up with the number 65%. And it's not at all a, uh, easy or transparent to figure out the numbers that everybody's ba uh, batting around. Of course, these numbers weren't something that, uh, that CNBC or Bloomberg, someone fed them these numbers and they gave them these numbers and put them out. And uh, you got to be very careful when you look at these. Of course, there's lies, damn lies, and statistics. And uh, you have to be very, very careful about the way that they word these. When I go back and look at it, a beat to me is higher on both earnings and revenues, not just one or the other. Did the stock go up or down on the news? How many times was the earnings uh, between the last earnings call and that earnings call? How many times was it revised? If they revised it the week or worn the week before it came in, to me, that's still a loss. That it went up uh, a nickel or a dime or that they met revised earnings uh, a week or 10 days before, to me, still a loss. So there's a lot of ways to beat what is the truth about earnings. Uh, my guess is that they're using the most extreme liberal interpretation of that. And uh, eh, who knows? But uh, I'm going to uh, vigorously, I always like that, because uh, whenever your client, you're a lawyer and your client, just uh, killed 20 people with a, a, a uh, uh, hatchet or your guy just uh, ended up br uh, bringing a corporation to its knees because he embezzled a ton of cash. They always say, we're, uh, we don't, uh, these are false allegations and we're going to vigorously defend these folks. But uh, I'm going to vigorously defend my belief that uh, we're far from the truth in earnings when they push these out. And I'd have to go back line by line. But my guess is the real number is a great deal lower if you put in some other factors. So uh, as they say, uh, uh, numbers uh, don't lie. Or see, what is it? Figures don't lie, but liars can figure. Uh, also, it depends on what your bias is for the market. But uh, I'm going to say that the real number is a great deal lower. And... Uh, we can move on from that if we all agree. Of course, uh, El Polo Loco, the crazy chicken, if I have my Mexican correct, El Polo Loco. I'll have to ask my uh, uh, number one uh, puppy, El Diablo, if El Poco Loco actually means that. Of course, a kind of a Mexican version uh, in chicken of uh, Chipotle. And, of course, it went uh, public today. And this is uh, totally wrong for this. I didn't put it in there. Uh, but uh, I will be back in just a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. 
For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we've got the S&P off about uh, 10 points, just a little underneath that, with 1.7 billion shares on the New York Stock Exchange tape. Uh, anyway, we're talking about El Poco Loco. It has uh, locations in Nevada, Texas, Arizona, Utah, split between 168 company-owned stores and 233 franchises. 90% uh, of all its money comes from California, so uh, they're really not even out of the gate. Of course, a lot of people seeing what uh, Chipotle did this week and uh, looking and seeing uh, El Poco Loco and uh, uh, well, looking at it. Anyway, it's kind of an upscale uh, fast uh, chicken place, and uh, your average bill is going to be somewhere between six and eight bucks a person. Same, so maybe well, what you'd spend at Subway, something like that, and uh, above uh, McDonald's, but eh, below maybe Chipotle now that they're charging extra for a lot of stuff. Uh, looks like a good franchise and very interesting. Uh, of course, uh, all Mexican food. Pretty not much not Mexican, is it? Or is that just me? It just seems like when I've been to Mexico, uh, what surprises or what my dad ate for Mexican food was never really anything like what they had down there. I always felt uh, sorry for the Mexicans, too. For a, a country, its national song to be El Cucarache, of course, a song about a cockroach. Um, but their, their music's all pretty bad, so it doesn't really matter. There's a few bright spots out there for the most part uh i hope that uh, the cockroach song was not the height of their musical uh kingdom there in mexico but i digress it is a mad 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 market and uh, we're going to take a look at some of the stocks moving out here today um before i get into that we're going to look at a few stocks wanted to uh, bring up uh, that there is a uh, 
a fairly decent uh, amount of heavily sorted stocks, and we're seeing some of them really pop uh, pretty uh, large. Uh, so let's see, go back out here and get that off. There we go, and reset. There we go. And uh, we're going to look at some of them. Some of them have been uh, fairly big movers. BlackBerry, of course, one of the biggest shorted stocks out here. Of course, earnings, uh, not very happy with uh, them uh, in their last earnings call. And, of course, uh, this uh, company, uh, you know, kind of ran up uh, mostly into last month and into the first part of this month on word that they cut a lot of cost. But the answer is they're still not selling anything. So not as big losses, but, of course, no opportunity to actually make a lot of great deal of cash. Uh, the ideal thing for BlackBerry would be for them to keep it above 10 bucks for three months. So uh, hedge funds and uh, other big funds out there could buy it back again and people could pawn it off to somebody. I don't think that there's a chance in uh, Texas that a snowball would last on pavement down there in mid-August uh, that uh, BlackBerry can go back and really make anything out of themselves. Their claim to fame, of course, was somewhat of security and a horrible little keyboard that some people learned to love. Never me. I thought they were kind of always kind of horrible buttons. My fingers were too big. So, yeah, I think it did well with women with tiny little point-like fingers, or maybe they're, they use their nails or something, but I never could use it. Uh, I know a lot of people got real used to it and love the security of it, uh, but of course, more and more, we're seeing uh, phones with end-to-end -end encryption, and it's going to be a whole lot less reason to have BlackBerry in a year from now uh, than to have it even today. And of course, uh, their sales are rather poor, uh, but uh, the problem is, every time you want to short this thing, they'll run it with some other new news article and run the shorts out of it, which is a great way to distribute stock if you want to. Uh, but just remember these stocks do have, that we're going to go through here fairly quickly, have a monstrous short uh, sellers in them, and uh, nothing is going to change. Cliff Natural Resources. Um, now, this one has a ton of shorts in it, but they're probably out here from much higher levels, and the opportunity uh, to short the stock uh, probably not going to gain you a great deal, but also being short it probably going to take you a long time to get this thing out but at least this thing's going sideways now and uh, not going down as it had for a great deal of time uh, other stocks that with super short interest 3d systems we talked about this one the other day uh, looks like it has an abc down and uh, any kind of volume as it breaks that 43 dollar level uh, would set up an abc in a one-to-one -one, uh, to 30 dollars we're going to go through a few more of these stocks and then look at some of the stocks that have moved just today. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Loco up uh, 8 bucks, uh, came out at 15 bucks, so 2301 for the last quote. Be back in a minute. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Anyway, if we do get a pop in this market, I think we're headed down. But if we do, uh, these uh, short uh, stocks with monster short interest are probably going to get a fairly decent ride. So when I see a market crack or try to crack, especially Dow closing below 17,000 today, maybe uh, taking a little luster off the uh, off the uh, rows of uh, the never ending bull market. Um, I always want to look at these if I would decide to flip my uh, button and go from uh, being a bear to being a bull. I want to look at these. Of course, the 3D systems, monster short interest. A lot of times, it just because it's got short interest doesn't mean uh, that it's not going down. It just means that if you short the thing, you better be uh, ready to get stopped out in a hurry because they come incredibly uh, volatile. One of the other ones, uh, we talked about this on the air many times uh, and uh, had a few people call in. But uh, GT Advanced Technologies. It looks to me like uh, they drove the stock up and then distorted the living daylights out of it. And uh, from the short interest on this one, to me, it looked like uh, somebody knew what they were doing was probably running up and shorting at the same time uh, back into those highs before the thing blew apart. But a uh, huge short interest it looks like it could be trying to make its uh, B to C leg uh, before it goes back down. My guess is it's headed to 12 bucks. Herbalife, of course, uh, we all know the story on this one, and uh, I probably should have gone along this one uh, after the day it had uh, this week, but uh, I did not. But uh, just remember, this thing has got uh, monstrous short interest and always hard to be short this one. Uh, J.C. Penny, uh, this one 
is just about, uh, well, you'd have to put the EKG on it and see if there's a heartbeat on this thing. Because, boy, this thing looks like it's in a narrowing trading range uh, lower and lower. But, uh, again, you have to watch that. Of course, this is about the worst segment out there. And I imagine that our next quarterly release is not going to be as good as everybody thought it was. Uh, this is kind of in the same ball game as uh, BlackBerry, but um, uh, earnings date. Let's take a look here and see when August eighteenth, and uh, my guess is that it heads down after that. Uh, JDCom, another monster one. Of course, a very narrow, narrow ranges. Uh, when they get very narrow like this, normally the first move is a head fake about seventy five percent of the time. So if you wanted to pull the trigger and uh, try to get on these, you want, uh, for the most part, uh, these stocks to kind of bounce up and go higher uh, and wash out uh, the easy shorts before you come back down. Another one is Lululemon. This thing has done nothing but go down since 77 bucks. But a uh, nice little pop, and you see volume coming in yesterday. Uh, not a lot of follow-through out here today, but... Uh, you know, not a bad-looking stock and a huge short interest in this thing. Um, I think they're still buying those yoga pants. I see those girls at the uh, grocery store showing them off. Uh, of course, uh, they look like they've been painted on. But anyway, uh, it is one of those stocks that I would probably, uh, if the market turned around here, I would be looking for that test of $36.26 to get an eyeball on it. Uh, mankind, uh, another one out here. Not an easy, uh, easy stock to be short here. Had some huge volume up at these highs, which would make me think that there is an opportunity to go back and maybe get a rip a couple of bucks out of this one. My guess is you're going to have to be very close on the trigger finger. Uh, other stocks that uh, I hate, Solar City is one of them. Uh, a lot of people I know love these stocks. Uh, my contention is that they don't make any real money. If you took the government subsidies away from them, uh, they're out of business in 90 days. And uh, Solar City is one of these. But, uh, of course, everybody in the world knows that. Uh, so it's highly short. And what we have out here is a good indication of a huge short squeeze on the 17th of June. Uh, we're getting back up here awful close to testing this July 2nd high. So uh, this one's probably more on the squozen part and uh, probably not a good play out there if we did get some kind of huge move. We saw a big move in soda yesterday. It, of course, also is one of these stocks that's highly short. Uh, they put out their own rumor that they're up for sale. Doesn't mean anybody's going to buy them. Does mean that they're up. And, of course, uh, they just uh, ran them to the cleaners yesterday up to $36.53, ran every stop, and then pulled back. And, uh, of course, back at about 31 bucks. Uh, solar power, or sun power, excuse me, another one of these super high short interest stocks. Normally, these shorts, when they're this big, is institutional, and they're going to be short on these for a long time. Sun power, uh, when's earnings on that one? Uh, okay, next week, July 31st. So keep an eye on this one. But uh, normally, uh, you get an opportunity to get uh, squoes out before the earnings call. What would that be? The 31st is Thursday next week. So, and I th if I'm not mistaken, this one comes before the bell. But I'd have to go back and check. But this one may be an interesting one uh, during the any kind of uh, reactionary move next week to the upside uh, going into earnings might be easy to get a couple of bucks out of it. Now, this one actually not a bad looking stock out here, and especially when we know uh, how big the short interest in it. Uh, Theravance, uh, THRX, uh, this would be a uh, good one out here for a short squeeze uh, if it ever gets going, if you wanted a interday play. And all these short squeezes I'm talking about are probably one day or two days at the most. The June 3rd low out here, $22.36, 1.5 $1 shares. And, of course, we came into it uh, today with uh, 900000 so far. So not too bad. It hasn't broken that low. Probably break that low on Monday. Uh, but uh, not a bad one to look at here. And uh, I also like the way it's set up. 
uh, with uh, the energy up from that 2236 low on June 3rd to the high on uh, July 3rd at 3180. Uh, but uh, I digress. Another one that I'd love to short the Dickens out of, but of course, uh, they've got too many Dickens. And it is uh, Tesla, T-S-L-A. It, uh, it's kind of one of those stocks that would love to fall if everybody wasn't so short the stock. Uh, the watched, pot, uh, the watched uh, pot that never boils. Uh, but uh, I think it's got earnings coming up soon, too. Let's take a look at that earnings date. Uh, yeah, Thursday next week also. So we've got a, a few of these stocks with super high short interest. And as long as they don't hugely disappoint, you're probably going to get a bounce out of them. My guess is that uh, if you're lucky enough to do that, maybe you get a bounce out of Tesla and you could uh, see all the shorts capitulate and then pull the trigger on the short, maybe be on the right side of it. A Ubiquity Networks is another one of these stocks that is perennially short. I loved it when it came out. Uh, it came back down to uh, 10 bucks, and then, of course, started running. Uh, but uh, I kind of got scared out of this because uh, uh, the lot of uh, BS stories that were being floated around, I never felt like I could be in this stock long without one of those uh, completely erroneous stories coming out. But, of course, it would stop me out. So I ended up not playing this stock. But uh, it was one of those IPOs that came out uh, out of the gate fairly strong. And uh, then came down uh, actually to $7.80 and then ran back up. I liked the company. I liked the products. Uh, but, uh, again, the stock did not like me. Uh, but uh, eh, I digress. Uh, Viva Systems is another one. This WUBA, uh, 58.com, is one of these Chinese Internet companies. And I would be watching this one very closely. And do they have earnings coming out? Uh, earnings date. Take a quick look. Uh, eh. Now they're good for a while out here. The earnings date, I think, was this 26 with a huge volume in it. Uh, but kind of going sideways out here, of course, as the Alibaba IPO warms up, um, I have a feeling that uh, they're going to do everything in the world to make these things hit like Baidu did last night. And uh, eh, keep an eye on it. Zhu Zhu Lily. Don't know this company very well, ZU. Uh, but another one down here that uh, could be making lows. I like the test of uh, July 8th going into the low of May 14th uh, with light volume, but we still need to hit 28.75. Uh, but uh, these stocks do have a tendency to have some fairly uh, decent, uh, well, probably one day, two day moves in them uh, with a super high short interest. But well, this thing's been coming down since $73.50. I suspect uh, you're going to get some pretty wild moves in a few of these. Maybe we'll get a chance to do some short covering squeezes and then go short once again. But uh, eh, what can you say? Let's go back and check the S&P here real quick. Off of nine, eh, I'll call it nine and a half points. 1.76 billion shares of volume has gone very light going into the weekend. Of course, the Dow, uh, 50 points under that 1,700 mark, 17,000 mark. And uh, probably catch a few eyes out there and a few people thinking about uh, maybe it's time to look at the exits. Uh, of course, uh, when we look at stocks uh, or sectors that are moving, uh, nothing more than the SMHs. Um, I had to uh, really pull the trigger on these last night, uh, just knowing that it was going to be a horrible open this morning. Uh, and uh, I got a little bit more out of it when we looked at slab. Silicon Laboratories came out this morning, and it got hammered, probably sort of shorted it last night after I saw the other silicon chips coming out. But uh, numbers this morning on slab were horrifically bad, and uh, eh, you can get all of them. But uh, there's uh, some opportunity, uh, especially in this market right now, for something I don't do much of, which is interday trades. And uh, starting to see some fairly decent uh, opportunities to go out and pick off a few bucks uh, during the day on some of these. Uh, Silicon Laboratories down on some fairly decent volume, but uh, you'd think there'd be a little bit more in this for the move it had, but uh, eh, kind of tough to figure out. Uh, some of the other stocks I wanted to look at out here, uh, Verisign, uh, this stock had been horribly sh shorted, V-S-R-N, and of course, uh, V-S-R-N or V-R-S-N? 
your SN, sorry. Dyslexia cure for found. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, just a huge move out here. Of course, there was a lot of, and I think rightly so, sell off in VeriSign ever since Google uh, had been talking about getting into that particular business. Uh, I think that they still are. Uh, Google is downplayed it, at least for the moment. Uh, a lot of short interest. Of course, not everybody bailed at once on VeriSign. A uh, huge, nice pop out here today. 5.1 million shares. Again, you probably want to look at this one when people get off the short interest on it uh, because uh, Google's going to really cut uh, their earnings potential down over the long term. Uh, over the short term, really hasn't affected it too much greatly. But uh, Google's just getting going. Uh, my guess is that uh, in another quarter, we're probably going to see the top in VeriSign for years and years to come. Much like the uh, problems that uh, CRM has, which uh, is all about uh, uh, every big player out here, uh, from Amazon to Google to Microsoft and uh, others are all cutting their prices for cloud services to the bone. Salesforce, of course, doesn't have a huge uh, other business to support uh, the uh, life of leisure in cloud services where you're not expected to make any money. Of course, one of the reasons Amazon probably got smacked today is that they spent so much money in the cloud where they're going to get little or nothing back for a while. Uh, but uh, when we look at Salesforce, another good story out here uh, of a company that needs to find a dancing partner uh, to make it long term. So VeriSign, unless they get bought by somebody, uh, problematic. Uh, Salesforce, the same thing. Of course, they've been talking about uh, either going private. Uh, and or uh, the opposite side getting a bot off. And uh, we can take a look at some of those. Uh, what do we have? Do uh, we have enough time for some more? I think we do. And uh, SWI. Of course, uh, solar winds. We talked about this last night, or yesterday actually, about how it had nothing to do with solar. And I would change my name if I were them, especially with the impending doom of solar stocks, at least in my opinion. Uh, SolarWinds, of course, uh, does a lot more of IT management kind of stuff, uh, in, in infrastructure in the digital economy. Uh, but uh, up on a monster move, and uh, just uh, basically all these stocks are either, uh, you know, they're either kind of going to heaven or hell. Not a lot of stocks just going sideways as we watch these. Of course, uh, not the only stock out here. Uh, Starbucks was one of the more interesting uh, earnings calls out there last night. When we look at them, of course, they are down eh, back in the trading range. One of the things that you didn't like was it had been going up against the March 21st high. We've been talking about this for a few days uh, and putting the chart in the newsletter for a few days for the daily one. But basically, got into that $78.64 high for March 21st. Uh, had a lot of volume, 9 million shares. Never had any real volume. And looks to me like uh, probably headed back to the 76 bucks over the next few days. We're going to look at a few of these others that are rocking and rolling on earnings when we come back. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, next week is going to be cursed with news. Uh, it's going to be extremely violent, I suspect, with the FOMC, a lot of other uh, stuff going on out there. And if you uh, had picked next week to stop uh, eh, doing just about anything, I think uh, you picked the wrong week. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit drinking. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Yep, uh, next week is probably the wrong week. It's going to be a busy earnings week with lots of news out there and of course as we spoke about several big name stocks uh hitting the earnings block as uh we were talking about the starbucks out here this it really looks to me like it probably wants to come back in that 76 dollar range over the next uh, few trading days uh down a little off of earnings and uh, i didn't really dig in too far why it just uh, looked to me like uh it was probably moving uh, just a little bit too far, too fast uh, in a lot of these stocks. Really hasn't broken the yeah, trend line on the way up uh, just yet. Uh, gold uh, rose uh, almost 13 bucks to 13.03 an ounce. Uh, we've also got some other stocks. Uh, didn't look at Baidu just yet. Uh, B I D U. I would, as I said, be very wary about shorting any of these Chinese stocks over the next 60 days, as of course. Uh, the drum beat's going to be to try to get these things out and uh, uh, try to engineer short squeezes, anything to make them all look 
good. And, of course, the Chinese government probably going to do a great deal themselves to uh, make this look neat and interesting. Uh, of course, those gaps are probably going to get filled eventually. Uh, Baidu up uh, 20 bucks or so uh, as we look at them. And, uh, you know, a solid breakout uh, with volume. What you don't have is the big candle. You have kind of a smaller candle for such a gap, which normally includes at least some kind of pullback over those moves. Uh, a MZN. Of course, uh, oh, that tick probably hit my foot. But to one of the highest volume days, and we're not done, already about 15 million shares on the way down. Of course, investors... Uh, getting to the point now where they're asking where the beef is. When are we going to have some earnings? Uh, you're spending more cash, not less. I went into some of the reasons of where I think that cash is being spent and why today in the Tech Insider newsletter. But uh, it's uh, to me, it doesn't look uh, like this thing's going to get any better. I know uh, many of the people on Wall Street are probably going to rally around it come Monday. Uh, not so much today. But I imagine everybody's going to tell everybody how uh, when they uh, when uh, they sell manure, it smells like uh, roses. Uh, but Amazon does have a problem, and that is uh, we've been going on 10 years without making a dime. Uh, maybe it's time to flip the switch off and uh, start putting some cash in the bank. Uh, start returning some of that cash to the ownership instead of just uh, talking about it. I've always said, though, that I thought the stock was highly overvalued. Uh, if you look at it uh, as a Walmart where you're looking at margins uh, after taxes and everything else at about 6.5%. Um, compared to uh, gross revenues. And it is one of those stocks that, you know, everybody's given a free pass forever. You get a few of these. And then, of course, he tries to make the uh, earnings not look that bad. But basically, he's already told you the next two quarters are like this. So unless you're looking at uh, going long this thing probably uh, right before Christmas, uh, there shouldn't be any too many upside surprises in this. If you normally join me for the Tech Insider Hour uh, at 4 o'clock uh, on the Tom O'Brien Show, hang on to me for the next hour where we're going to do the Tech Insider just an hour earlier this day. Catch you next week, same bat channel, same bat time. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.